Oscilloscope measurement resolution is determined by multiple attributes of the instrument, as well as the techniques used. In this video, we'll compare the measurement performance of an MSO 5204B and an Agilent High Definition Oscilloscope. The device under test we'll be using is an inexpensive power inverter used to power electroluminescent wire. It has a flash mode that outputs high voltage bursts. In flash mode, the inverter outputs bursts of around 650 volts peak to peak. We'll be comparing the two scopes ability to measure small signal details in the presence of large signals, a practical application of high vertical resolution. The oscilloscopes we'll be connecting to the inverter are a Tektronix MSO 5204B and an Agilent 9204H, both using the standard passive probes. Agilent's 2 GHz scope comes with 500 MHz passive probes at 9.6 picofarads. The Tektronix 2 GHz scope comes with 1 GHz passive probes at 3.9 picofarads capacitive loading. Both scopes are set up the same. Here are the settings on the MSO 5204B. The vertical scale is 70 volts per division. Triggering on a positive edge and using auto hold off we can always capture at the beginning of the burst pattern. The horizontal scale is set at 50 milliseconds per division with sample rate of 2 million samples per second and 1 million record length points. This is enough resolution to let you clearly see the high voltage burst signal. No smoothing techniques have been applied so far. Notice the signal is not being clipped. The point of interest is just before the beginning of this pulse so let's zoom in on it. Even though the sample rate is set to 2 million samples per second, the instrument is actually sampling at a much higher rate. By activating high res acquisition mode, we can take advantage of these extra samples to increase the vertical resolution to over 12 bits. As you can see, high res improves resolution and reduces noise. This technique is done in hardware. It's fast and effective, using all extra samples to define the signal. Doing this, we can clearly see the small couple volt ringing signal before the high voltage burst. The same signal is being captured on the Agilent DSO 9204H. Since this scope has an 8-bit ADC, there is an option of displaying the original data by going into the user preference settings. Hidden at the bottom of the menu is the option to turn off the default setting of hypersampling mode. We're going to turn this off so we can initially compare an apples-to-apples -apples setup of 8-bit scope hardware. Notice how the bits of resolution switches to 8 bits in the bottom left of the screen. We tried to set up the same vertical settings but couldn't. Since Agilent's passive probes are rated for 300 volts RMS CAT2 and the EL wire signal is around 190 volts RMS, you'd expect we could measure the full signal. Unfortunately, the acquisition hardware limits the vertical scale to 50.1 volts per division, resulting in 38% of the signal being clipped. We're going to keep it at 50.1 volts per division and move on. To use a similar setup as a tech scope, we're setting up 50 milliseconds per division with 2 million samples per second. We'll set up a hold off trigger of 300 milliseconds to keep constantly triggering in the same spot. Now let's look at that ringing again in front of the burst. Notice Agilent's lack of vertical zoom here. We're limited to two options. One rescales your vertical horizontal settings and the other is a horizontal zoom. In order to have a full capture and zoomed window, I need to set up a math function to see the point of interest in the presence of the burst. I'll select magnify and set some parameters. Remember how this is a high definition scope? On the tech scope, we used boxcar averaging to reduce the noise to see the signal of interest. On the Agilent scope, we'll need to be in their special hypersampling mode in order to see the signal of interest. Let's turn on hypersampling now to see the signal of interest. Hypersampling uses a boxcar average technique like tech, then applies a two-point moving average to the data in addition. Notice how the noise is reduced and the signal comes out of the noise floor. This waveform looks pretty good, partly because clipping the high voltage signal has improved the vertical resolution. Similar to Agilent's hypersampling two-point moving average, 
Tech can apply a variety of math smoothing effects very easily. These math functions allow you to tailor the measurement bandwidth and optimize the signal to noise ratio performance. On the MSO 5204B, we've already set up the hardware to high res mode. Now we can apply software filters to further reduce noise and make the signal even clearer. The MSO 5000B series includes a wide range of filter functions. We'll set up a math channel for smoothing. Notice how the smoothing reduces the noise just a little more and gives us a better defined signal that's suitable for making measurements. Another technique for making high resolution measurements involves double probing a signal. On the Tektronix scope, I'm going to add a second channel and maximize that small ringing signal. Once scaled, we can see both the full signal on channel 1 and the small ringing on channel 2. Seeing these two parts of the same signal maximizes the dynamic range of the ADC and gives us more resolution on the points of interest. Not to mention, two tech probes offer less capacitive loading than one Agilent passive probe. Overlaying the Tektronix captures with a single probing or double probing option compared to the Agilent Keysight scope, notice how we're able to measure a few volts in the presence of a large voltage. Remember the Agilent scope was not able to acquire 38% of the waveform with standard probes. Are you willing to trade off a little bit of resolution for the ability to see your overall signal? We saw that noise can often be a limiting factor in making high resolution measurements. And in most cases, we have to take steps with both instruments to condition the signal just right. Scopes are complex systems, and measurement resolution is determined by multiple elements of the system. Consider the whole system, along with all the features of the instrument, not just a single specification.